Howdy y'all, welcome to Cowboy Convos. We are diving into a very interesting topic today, the desire to make your partner as large as possible and or a person that desires to be as large as possible, called feederism. Due to YouTube guidelines, I'm going to be replacing some words with more neutral words, so when I discuss this specific topic, I will be calling it a taboo desire or a fetish. Just replace the V with an F. I'm going to use words like intimacy and excitement. If you don't know what I'm referring to, you are probably too young to watch this video. We will go over the definition, culture, personal experiences from those who were once in these taboo relationships, certain TikTok accounts that are definitely a part of this community, some signs that a person isn't to this desire, and even Virgie Tovar comes into play. First, let's look at the definition of this desire under a basic Google search. It is described as, quote, Feederism is a fat, fetish subculture in which individuals overly romanticize weight gain and feeding. These individuals claim to become excited when feeding their partners and encouraging them to gain weight. The ones eating get excited by eating, being fed, and the idea of getting bigger. End quote. This plays into the desire of only wanting to date very large people and only being able to get excited with someone who is very large. These people can be called chubby chasers, but they aren't inherently a part of the community that actively feeds their partner. Let me make it very clear that there is a difference between having a preference for someone plus size and an unhealthy attraction that completely hinges on body size itself and not the person within that fat body. For example, there have been men on the show 600 Pound Life who left their wives when they begin losing weight, despite being married for years. That is when you know someone has an unhealthy attraction to something rather than a general preference. We see this on the other side as well. There are people who only get excited when they see or are with someone who is extremely underweight, as in Eugenia Cooney. She's already rumored to be a creator that plays into those who romanticize her illness. People like Nick Akato and Amber Reed have also been rumored to do the exact same with their illness surrounding food. Another difference I want to make clear is the difference between someone profiting off their bodies and being the one making the decision of eating and being big and those in relationships with a supposed loved one that actively participates in the person's illness for their own satisfaction. Now, let's look at some TikTok accounts that are a part of this community. Here is a couple where the man is actually the one being fed in this relationship, and the woman is the one providing. Baby, I've made you a lovely cheese platter for lunch. Jesus Christ, woman, that's too much for me. That's a whole lump of cheese. I, I like to look after my man. Through that. As you heard, the woman says she just likes feeding her man, and this is a common theme. The whole idea of just feeding your partner, that is supposed to be a normal, domestic, and loving thing, is turned into something more strange. This excuse gets used a lot in their content when people comment pointing out that they are a part of the feeder community. Is your wife a feeder? Isn't every wife? No. I've been cooking, cleaning my eyebrow hairs out of place, listen! Calm down baby, okay. calm down baby! <sighs> We all know you like to feed me. They are right. Quote, doesn't every wife? End quote. Girl, no. They try to make a joke out of it, but I think it's pretty clear this is real. Especially when we look at more of the TikToks. She's a feeder. So what if I like to feed my man yeah. a block of cheese a day? Yeah. Is that so bad? Probably. Yeah, is that so bad? Yeah. Are you mad? Are you mad? When it comes to these relationships, feeding is not a simple love language, it is the backbone of the relationship. Am I a feeder? You sure are, but well, baby, that's a bit too much. Cheese you for just me. asked for all of that. But there's fruit on there, so that means it's okay. He begs me for food all the time, all day long. He just keeps going, keeps saying, Can I have a drink, baby? Can I have a sandwich? I told you like it now, yeah? Not in front of our son, George, please. That's enough. Oh, yeah, they have a kid. There are quite a few videos where the man is shirtless and being handed food, then shaking around. But for the sake of all our eyes, there won't be any more of that in this video. This TikTok account seems to be trying to display their taboo lifestyle while also trying to make a joke of it to deflect the reality of the situation. Compared to another account I found, though, they are pretty tame. This account, I literally cannot even show you any of their TikToks without being flagged. Here is the man, the one who is doing the feeding. 
Tell me you like fat chicks without telling me you like fat chicks. The rest of the video is him slapping his girlfriend's large stomach while she eats food. That is basically the whole TikTok page. The difference between a preference and an extreme fetish is apparent when you see a couple like this. Simply liking bigger women should not include obsession over their body parts or acts of destruction like supporting one's binge eating. It's like if someone was with a person who struggles with the restrictive ED and encouraged them to starve themselves, do weird diets, body check, etc. Here are some more screenshots I took of their other accounts that are actively searching for others to support their feeding desires. Here we have a woman showing her stomach, and the description is, quote, This is Gemma. Been eating good these couple of days. XX. Thanks for all the support. End quote. Then the hashtags are all related to feeding. This other one is another woman focusing on her stomach, and the description is, quote, Stuffing video, four minutes available for just 15 euro. End quote. So people are advertising their taboo content, trying to attract other people for monetary purposes. Again, I don't think someone making money off of their body is hurting anyone else. That is something they are doing to themselves. But it is still a key part of looking into the feederism community. This community is on Twitter, Reddit, Tumblr, with tags like Feed Me, Fat Belly, and Gaining Weight on Purpose. Now, I really don't care if two consenting adults are participating in a fetish or any other taboo thing. What is concerning is when that desire is literally causing long-term harm. It isn't just a power complex that lasts during intimacy, it is a lifestyle that puts one person at extreme risk and the other at an extreme advantage. When a person wants their partner to be unhealthy and even bedbound, that is a lot more than just being into a fat body type. I mentioned before that there have been people in 600 pound life who lost partners after losing weight, and it is sadly a lot of them that this happens to. But if they did not get help, they would have passed away and their partner would 100% be a participant in that. There is actually a woman, Patty Sanchez, who almost crossed over because her boyfriend encouraged her to go from 8 stone to 51 stone. And for my Americans out there, that is 112 pounds to 714 pounds. This woman gained over 600 pounds due to her partner wanting her to be as big as possible. And no universe is abnormal or healthy. Thankfully, she has lost a lot of weight, but it only happened after she broke up with her boyfriend. There are a lot of stories on YouTube covering people who left relationships when they were essentially being manipulated into gaining weight. Here we have a video with the title, quote, Husband upset that his 329 pound wife wants to lose weight, end quote. And that brings us to another side of this taboo world. The people who are being fed that didn't even realize their partners were purposely trying to make them gain weight. There is a woman on TikTok who regularly shares her experience of being a victim of this type of relationship. She actively discusses the dangers and horrors of being a part of the community through manipulation. Of course, there are people who don't think this is abuse at all, and that there is no issue with wanting your partner to get bigger and bigger. Here is a TikTok of her going off on someone who commented on one of her videos discussing her experience. The comment says, quote, being fat and gaining weight isn't inherently unhealthy slash unsightly though. Like I said, depends on how you go about it. End quote. Basically, the person is trying to argue that there is no problem with being into this desire because being fat isn't wrong or unattractive and there are always ways for this type of relationship that isn't damaging. This was the creator's response. You can sit here and pretend like a woman gaining a bunch of weight isn't going to affect her societally, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, society is going to treat her worse. That's real life. And the community that gets off on that, the whole thing needs to be addressed. And if you're in the community, then you should know that the goals that they set for other people, for other people, they set goals, body goals for other people. And it's never a healthy weight, okay? Yeah, or, or I'm not going to sit here and pretend, too, that being fucking 400 pounds is healthy or good for your body. It's not. It's not. And that's what they get off on. <laughs> they get off on the fact that you're ruining your image and ruining your health. And if you don't believe me, which you already know, I'm, you already know because you're in the community. You already know that's the case. You already see what goes on. So why are you fighting me? And for everybody else that isn't part of the community, because this person knows if you're not part of the community, then you can go to any sort of feeder site. You can go to Curvage or FA or whatever the fuck. Literally, you'll see the narrative 
is women that are super over overweight, right? And they're like, I'm so sloppy. I'm so sloppy. I can't even get out of bed. Oh, I'm so disgusting. I just love being so disgusting and such a pig. That's what the fucking narrative is. That's not healthy or okay in any sense. <sighs> she is 100% correct. It isn't healthy in any sense, and getting off on someone being unable to care for themselves or just be very unhealthy is a sign that therapy is needed. And I don't know if you caught that part about dating sites, but yes, there are literal dating sites for those looking to be fed and those looking to feed. I don't know why I was so shocked by this. There are websites for everything these days, but I was, and I found a couple. This one is called Phoebe, and the description of the dating page is, quote, Phoebe is a social network and dating site for those who like to feed and eat, fat admirers, and big and beautiful women slash men. We're a quirky bunch of men and women who love words like curvy, thick, plump, bellied, chubby, fat, obese, supersized, and so much more. End quote. There are over 100,000 members on this site, by the way. And there's an app. There is even one of these sites for gay men specifically. It is called Grommer and has the same format as the other site. I'm pretty sure they are run by the same company, but you can see with the illustrations of very large people who are like exploding out of their clothes that this is an obsession rather than a simple preference. Not only are there dating sites for this community, but there are even pages dedicated to what essentially is fan fiction and people promoting their own bodies. The site is called Fantasy Feeder, and it says, quote, Indulge your fat fantasies and like-minded people in our fat-positive social community, end quote. And again, through the illustration, it looks very taboo. I find it interesting that they use the word fat-positive to describe their website, as that is, as we know, an entire movement in itself, also called fat liberation or fat acceptance. We already know that fat acceptance started as men not wanting to be shamed for being obsessively into obese women, but it is constantly denied, yet here it is and words, on a page that is not about any social justice or anything of the sort. It is purely to gather people who are into the same fetish. What is interesting is that many fat activists do recognize that people, like chubby chasers or feeders, are icky. Most people in general don't want a certain part of their body to be obsessed over in a way that is being done in these taboo relationships. But I did find a very popular fat liberationist who doesn't think this is much of an issue and that the real issue is an unnatural obsession and desire for thin people, the one and only Virgie Tovar. In this opinion piece on Ravishly called, quote, Take the cake. Thin fetishism is more common than fat fetishism. Again, just replace the V in fetishism with an F. Virgie discusses how the only reason people focus on how weird it is to want a partner that is extremely obese for one's own satisfaction is because there's an underlining societal fatphobia. She offers instead that the biggest problem is the opposite, the obsessive desire to have someone thin and that it is just as taboo as being a chubby chaser or a feeder. Virgie states, quote, The definition of a fetish is a course of action to which one has an excessive and irrational commitment or a form of intimate desire in which gratification is linked to an abnormal degree to a particular object, item of clothing, part of the body, etc. Something like 80% of men expect their partner to be thin. Tell me that isn't an excessive and irrational commitment. End quote. So right off the bat, we have a very incorrect understanding of what an obsessive desire is. When a fetish is described as excessive, they mean the singular person has an excessive and irrational obsession, not that there is an excessive amount of people that qualify it as a fetish. She is confusing a person having an extreme obsession with multiple people having a preference. Under her understanding, most men liking women would be excessive and irrational commitment to needing a female partner. See how that doesn't make sense? Now, desiring an average weight partner which may be thin under Virgie's definition, is not taboo, and it isn't because of societal fatphobia. People tend to look for a partner that looks like they take care of themselves, and obviously this can be misleading as an average weight person could easily be abusing their bodies, but surface level wise, that is what people usually want. It is after getting to know the person that you really find out what their lifestyle is like. But when someone sees a very large person, a morbidly obese person, there is that observation of lack of self-care, which can create this instant lack of desire to want to date that person. 
The same way if you saw a person who was extremely underweight, or someone with torn up clothes, dirty, etc., and probably wouldn't find them attractive at first glance. It isn't an excessive and irrational commitment to want a partner that can independently care for themselves physically. This isn't fair to everyone, but attraction isn't about being what is fair, it just is what it is, and we can't fault people for a simple preference. There are always going to be people who don't care about things that many do care about, like weight or other lifestyle factors. So, Virgie is wrong here, and isn't the same, at all. To call most men wanting women, who appear to take care of themselves as equal to the fetish of men who require morbidly obese women, and for those women to continue getting bigger and less independent. If she wanted to compare two body-focused fetishes, she should have brought up the people who get excited from those with extreme restrictive disorders that result in dangerously low body weight. And in that case, I haven't seen evidence to show that the low body weight fetish is as common or popular as the obesity and feeding fetish but it obviously is still horrible and important to recognize. Now, why am I talking about this topic in the first place? Don't most normal people know that it is weird to want your partner to be extremely obese and to get off on that? Why discuss it? Well, it's because the people who are wanting that very large partner can be manipulative and making that happen. The girl who I showed earlier that confronted the commenter about the feeding community was someone who was essentially tricked into this taboo lifestyle. And with how the first couple I showed talking about how wanting to feed your loved one is just normal, it can be even harder to know the difference between showing love with your food and being actually obsessed with feeding your partner. Being able to recognize when a partner is crossing this line of liking to provide for their loved one to an actual fetish is important. I'm someone who loves to bake and cook and am the main chef of my relationship. I enjoy making tasty things for my partner. But I don't want to feed them to the point of him being ill. That sounds horrible. I have my partner's best interest in mind. The people who are part of a feeding for pleasure do not have their partner's best interest in mind. That's why this is such a dangerous type of relationship and why it needs to be talked about. Guys, I look, he think my boyfriend's a feeder. Okay, get this. I thought he just, you know, I thought he liked me even though I am fat. Like I just thought he was, that's his preference. And I thought like our love language and I thought like our love language was food. Turns out he might be a feeder because I got a chicken. Sorry about that, my phone died. Because I literally, I literally got a chicken salad. And um, I'm in the bathroom with it. And he was like, what are you on a diet? And I was like, uh, kind of. Um, but he like acted weird and was like, oh, you're gonna get all skinny and leave me? No, but I do want to get skinny. I don't know. All the signs are pointing to feeder. I thought like it was him being cute when he was rubbing my belly, but it might just be a kink. I think he turned the TV off. This woman being aware of what this feeding and fat fetish is, is what is saving her from possibly an abusive relationship. Because yes, feederism is abuse. I really want to focus on the phrase said by her partner, quote, Oh, what, you're going to get all skinny and leave me? End quote. That is a very, very bright red flag. It is also a very common thing said by partners that require a large partner. Clearly, there is an insecurity factor in these type of dynamics. The partner who feeds feels they need to do so, so that their partner stays large, therefore conventionally less attractive to others, and so their self-esteem stays low if they already know their partner is insecure about their weight. And let's be real, most overweight women do experience insecurity just because of the body expectations that they are raised with or because of a feeling of personal failing. People like her partner, aka feeders, are exploiting this insecurity, and that is emotional abuse. The last part is especially interesting. I wasn't able to show this video due to it being not YouTube friendly because of slight nudity, but rubbing the belly of the large partner is a key component of this fetish. There is a difference between just caressing your partner with love and having an obsession with a certain body part that you also are actively trying to maintain or make more prominent for your own satisfaction. This whole rubbing of the stomach thing brings me to the next TikTok. I'm going to just show the parts that are concerning with some royalty-free music. If you aren't watching, it is a large woman and a skinny man who are a couple. 
and the clips I show are of him basically playing with her stomach and arms. This is more of an opinion. Let me know if you disagree. But this clocks as fat vetish to me. He seems very obsessed with her fat and the fact that he buys reinforced toilet seat because she is so large and that seems more like a wake-up call than something cute. Imagine if this woman was extremely slim due to bad eating habits instead. Would you see him caressing her protruding bones and buying a small toilet seat so she doesn't fall in as cute or a sign that there is something taboo and dangerous going on? The other concerning thing is the woman does not seem to realize that he is possibly being inappropriate towards her. In the comment section, someone said, quote, I'm so happy for you. I will say, all the tummy grabbing kinda creeps me out. I don't like my tummy touched because I feel like men fetishize it. I agree with her, but the woman in the TikTok replied with, quote, He actually didn't like my belly when we first met. He liked big pear-shaped girls with flat stomachs. I'm the one who changed his mind, lol." End quote. Yeah, I'm not loling. This proves that he does have a desire for larger women already, which of course, by itself, is not anything bad. Having a preference for someone with more curves is totally fine. But with the video evidence of his behavior and the comments showing he does look for bigger girls, it seems clear, to me at least, that this isn't an innocent preference, but a full-on fetish. If she were to ever lose weight in the future, hypothetically, in a healthy manner, I honestly doubt he would stay. Again, this is all my own opinion. I'm not declaring he is or isn't a feeder or a chubby chaser. I'm just going off what I saw. Let me know your own opinion on if this seems like a red flag or not. The next video is of a thin woman and the text on the screen says, quote, Babe, you're such a feeder. Why do you keep offering me food? End quote. So, outright, she is admitting to being into making her partner larger for her own pleasure. Wanting someone to become unhealthy so that you can get your kitty purr in is extremely selfish, disturbing, and when put into action, it is abuse. Full stop. We would not be unbothered by this if it were a woman saying she constantly offered cigarettes to her loved one because she gets excited by smokers. Pushing unhealthy habits, behaviors, whatever, because it makes the relationship more interesting for the person doing the pushing, should not be normalized. Here is another example of this dynamic. So why are you handing me a brownie again? So that you stay chunky and all the other bitches will be like, oh no, he's chunky and then they won't want you. Even though I love you because you're chunky and cuddly and, and, and super comfy to land. And also brownies. What if they want me for my humor and personality? <laughs> oh. Quote, all the other girls will be like, oh no, he's chunky, and they won't want you, end quote. I can't even describe how much that statement infuriates me, and how she just continues to say how she loves him purely because of his body type. He doesn't, from what we can see, look very big, so I'm guessing this is something she is putting on him, not something he was aware she was into when getting together. What is even more infuriating is he argues about how people may love him for his personality, and she just laughs, like that couldn't possibly be enough to make someone love him. I obviously don't know the deep details of this relationship, all I have is this clip, but from that limited exposure, there are multiple signs of an unhealthy relationship between a feeder and a person who doesn't seem to have been fully aware of the fetish when their relationship started. This is an example of what I discussed before, being already in a relationship when there is a perceived love, then realizing that their partner is actively trying to make them unhealthy. Now, you may say, well, people can just refuse food, or whatever the unhealthy thing is. And while you're technically correct, many can do that and do that easily. These people are targeting those who may not have the best self-esteem, or they may be desperate for love and affection. And if this is something that is introduced slowly, it is easy for the one on the receiving end to either not notice it or be already too deep in the relationship to where simply leaving is not easy. 
Just like any other abusive relationship, leaving is a lot more complicated than just recognizing what is happening and peacing out. Some may think I'm being dramatic when I describe this type of relationship, or Vedish, as abusive. But when we get down to what it relies on, the degradation of another person's physical and mental health, it is clear that it fits under the definition of emotional and physical abuse. Even if the partner at the receiving end is aware and also getting pleasure from the dynamic, it is still abuse on the other person's part. Enabling someone's self-destruction, or introducing that destruction, is abuse, and that is a hill I'm always willing to die on. If you made it through this video, thank you, you're a trooper. Going into this topic, I already knew this was messed up, but I didn't expect just how common this seems to be and how people can slowly manipulate their partners into being a part of this taboo dynamic. If you found this video informative and or entertaining, please like and share it. I would really appreciate it as I have scarred myself researching this topic. If someone you know is in a relationship that has the red flags discussed, or if you are in one yourself, I highly recommend reaching out for some support with family, friends, or a professional. Thanks so much for watching listening. Subscribe for future videos if you wish to see more. They come twice a week, and I will catch you all in the next one.